All right, guys. So I got here is the um, SR15 AR rifle by Knights Armament. Um, I'm really happy to get this gun. Um, I know I'm known for uh, more of an AK guy, and I'm still an AK guy. But you know, sometimes you just have to be a trader and go to the the other dark side, which is the AR platform. So this is um, SR15 E3 Mod One in 5.56. And built by Knights Armament in um, uh, Florida, and uh, it's a 16-inch gun. Are you zoomed in or zoom out? Zoom in. That, that's zoom out. Zoom out. Um, it's a 16-inch gun. It's a. Uh, it's not a mid-length gas system. It's. Um, I think it's one inches more than uh, the mid-length gas system. Um, so it's somewhere between a rifle gas and a mid-length. What we got. It's a standard A2 uh, flash hider. It's not a muzzle brake. It's just a standard um, flash hider. It's nothing, nothing too special. A 16-inch barrel. It's cold hammer forged, chrome line, chrome uh, chamber, and and bore. <clears throat> it's the uh, the barrel profile is somewhere between. Um, here we got. It's a, this is a government profile, and this is somewhere between a pencil barrel and a government profile um, <clears throat> uh, over here we got the um, URX Knights Armament URX 3.1 um, here as you can see URX 3.1 13.5 inch free float rail and uh, here zoom out a little bit <clears throat> It's it's got a Picatinny rail at the very front, and also the very end. <clears throat> and Knights Armament decides to trim down the the general um, the the center area to save weight, and that's because um, most likely the the user will not have you know will not need all the the rail rail spacing in the middle. And they have the the front for lights and lasers, and the back mainly mainly for um, bipods. So um, it's a very light rail. I don't remember the exact weight, but um, they have the URX URX 4.0, which is a Kima system, and we all know how light those rails are. And this rail, and between this rail, the 3.1 and the 4, the Kima. Um, there's only a one ounce difference, so it's already a very light front end, uh, front rail. So um, uh, it comes with these um, panels to protect uh, your hand from heat. Um, as you can see here, the the panels has these um, nice, very nice texturing. It kind of reminds me of the golf ball. And let's zoom in even more. As you can see from the side, uh, it's got some uh, mildly pretty pretty aggressive textures, and so you don't have to worry about your hands uh, slipping. We have the the front. We have a KAC Micro um, front BUIS backup front sight. Uh, can't remember if you can focus on the the, the middle. As you can see, this post is actually circular, unlike most other over here, other other front post, which is um, a squared post. This one it's uh, 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 cylindrical, um, and uh, I don't know if you guys can tell the difference between this one and that one. This front post is, I think, it's thirty percent thinner than the traditional front post so it allows you to have a, a lot more accurate um, shots so I really really like this um, <clears throat> let's move on back uh, over here inside here we have the gla uh, the gas block uh, like I mentioned before this is um, not a mid-link system is longer a little bit longer than the mid-link and it's shorter than um, a rifle length gas system. Um, um, for the advanced AR guys out there, the longer the, the gas system, the lower the recoil and the, 
the stress would be for the internal parts. So, um, <clears throat> anyways, um, the gas block is pinned. I don't know if you can see that. It's pinned. It's not screwed on, which I think it's 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 a it's a better um, technique to pin on the gas block. The receiver, upper receiver, is just a standard receiver, um, with the exception of here. There's a cutout for the charging handle on this side as well as the standard on the left side. So let's flip it over. <clears throat> so you, as you can see here, it's got the SR15 E3 marking. Uh, I'll explain what E3 means um, later. And uh, let me break this apart. And the this is the mod one. <clears throat> There's a mod two current uh, that just came out um, a couple days ago. Well, maybe it's not even available yet, but it'll be out this month. The mod two and the mod one. The difference will be the front rail will be different. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The mod one will have the URX 3.1 system. And the mod 2 will have the URX4, which is a key mod. Here we have the BUIS backup iron sight for um, this is the KAC micro. Um, the difference between a micro and a regular backup sight by um, KAC um, it's mainly the the base. Um, they 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 lighten the the base and um, generally um, it's just for light um, weight saving. Um, okay, <clears throat> here we have the rear sight, and as you can see, it doesn't take take out a lot of uh, um, of your um, your view when viewing from 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 this this angle, and I really like that. Um, also, as you can see here, it's got numbers. That's mainly for um, different ranges. It goes all the way up. To 600, and there's an arrow on the side. It's a very, very well designed backup sight. <clears throat> I usually just set it to 200. <clears throat> and the the this is for um, long range shooting, so the the circle the aperture will be very small. So. And here we have the Knight's Armament logo. So you know when you buy the rifle, uh, you'll know the upper is from Knight's Armament. And that, as you can see there, that's some finish wear because um, the serrations on the backup side, and it's, it's not too aggressive, but when you move it a lot, um, it'll get scratched up. I don't really care, but that's, that might be something you guys might be concerned of. The charging handle just um, just uh, for you. It doesn't come with this uh, Bravo charging handle. This is a Mod 4 Bravo Company charging handle. Uh, it comes with not a standard but a standard T charging handle with a different kind of uh, extended lever. Uh, I, the reason I, I switch it out for this Bravo Company charging handle is because the the original lever is made out of steel, which um, over time it can damage the the notch over here so I uh, just you know just something to consider when you're buying this rifle <clears throat> um, move on down to the lower receiver um, the pretty logo uh, Knights Armament logo um, the lower receiver as you can see we got um, MB, uh, MB controls that's a mag release and normal controls on this side and on the right side we have the um, safety select uh, safety selector fire selector <clears throat> also we have the mag mag release um, on the it's standard and we have a bolt release or yeah bolt release on on this side as well um, unfortunately it's not a full MB control uh, bolt release because you can only close the bolt but you cannot hold open a bolt from from this side. I mean, I can press this part 
in as hard as I can all day and it will not make the bow close so that's that's the only downside uh, the trigger guard it's a KAC enhanced trigger guard uh, nothing too special they just blocked out the gap but I have this grip on so you can't really see it and it's quality you know, it's a lot better than the standard uh, trigger guard that just go straight uh, let's talk about the trigger the trigger is the double stage trigger and the 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 trigger comes with the nickel uh, plating. It's not. I don't think it's nickel boron. It's just nickel plated for smoother, smoother action. Um, all right, let's move on to the, the pistol grip. They don't come with this pistol grip. They come with a standard A2 pistol grip, um, which I really dislike. So I replaced it with this uh, tangle down pistol grip. Um, so that's. Let's not talk about it too much. Um. Let's move on down back over here <clears throat> we have a QD sling mount um, uh, the earlier version of the SR15 series will have a QD mount on the lower receiver they took it out because uh, when you hold the rifle and if you have a mount it, it, it the mount will the QD sling will the QD sling mount will get in the way of uh, the swivel will get in the way yeah, that's some bird singing. Um, so uh, it might be hard to see, but this QD mount is uh, anti-rotational. There's, I don't know if you can see it. It just, well, anyway, just take my words for it. It's anti-rotational, which is good, uh, a good good thing to have. Um, the back we have a different type of um, castle nut. Um, as you can see here, it's not standard castle nut. It's a card style. Kazelnut, I think it's spelled C-A-R like a car. Um, it's got a circle in the middle, so you, the guys that have uh, the the AR wrench will, will not, it will not come off. You cannot use the typical wrench for this gun. Um, you can compare it. Let's see the top. This is a typical Kazelnut, and as you can see, it's got a notch at the back. That's how you torque it off. And usually they'll have a a staking. Place, uh, this one's staked over here so it so it doesn't allow the the castle not to turn loose and on the SR15 it doesn't have the staking but according to KC um, um, they're torqued down with a proper uh, weight so it doesn't it will not go anywhere so and so far from all the reviews I, I read about and from all the owners on uh, the forum no one had any uh, any problem with the castle knot, so I'm I'm sure it's fine. <clears throat> Let's move down. Uh, talk about the buffer tube. The buffer tube is a military dimension buffer tube. Um, you might notice it's a it's gray in color. Uh, this is because it's got a dry film lube on it. Mm, I don't know why they did it. Uh, I mean, I never had uh, any AR that had trouble you know moving the buffer tube so I'm not sure I'm sure they have their reason but I don't think it's necessary but it's always good to have um, this is a uh, six position buffer tube <clears throat> so nothing too special there um, oh as you can see here it is anodized under the buffer tube uh, there's some black over here and so you don't have to worry about the after the dry film loop you know gets worn down you don't have to worry about this uh, buffer tube gets corroded or oxidized um, oxidization for on the aluminum <clears throat> it comes factory with with the uh, LNT um, uh, soap mod stock this is a $200 stock so it's a bonus to have. Um, is it worth two hundred? Probably not. It, to me, it's only worth one hundred fifty dollars max. But it's it is a very nice stock. <clears throat> um, when you uh, when you shoot the gun, you'll really appreciate the this um, slope they have on on this bus stock. You can probably take a nap on it while shooting. Um, <laughs> so it's that comfortable. It is a one-piece construction, so it's very durable, and uh, it comes with uh, you know battery cap storage in there. 
Um, so it's 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 quite nice. And this is the latest generation, so it will have the QD slots, uh, QD uh, hole, and it is also um, anti-rotational. At the back, we have um, I don't know how thick this is a rubber pad, um, you know, prevent, and it is also uh, to pre prevent you know um, sleeping um, when you are wearing armor or just when when you're sweating really bad. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, let me take this one. <clears throat> the top we have a Voltor. This is sort of their version of the Sobot. Well, not exactly, but it's their version. And if you can see the angle at the back is different. This one is sloped like on uh, any other traditional um, AR stock. And this one, as we can see here, it's straighter. It just going, it goes up and down. And personally, I take this kind of slope over the the sloped, <laughs> this kind of stock over a sloped stock. Uh, just personal preference, but I do really do not like a sloped bus stock. <clears throat> All right. Oh, the I just noticed the the safety selector. It's also um, dry film lube um, coating. I'm not sure why, but uh, I guess it, it's good. Do we talk about the trigger? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, <laughs> two stage, uh, 4.5 pound trigger, nickel coated. It's um, from the. Uh, I never had experience with the Geisley trigger, but um, from other guys on the forum, is they said um, it's very similar to a Geisley SSA, SSA, SSA E or SSA trigger. So. I mean, it's very good. Um, it's a very good trigger. <clears throat> let's explain about. Let's talk about the E3 destination. Um, the E3 is the KC E3 bolt. The E3 bolt is uh, um, a. Uh, it's a special part only for the Knights Armament rifles. At least their SR15. I'm not sure if they have the same bolt in their SR25. So, well, let's take this rifle apart. <clears throat> um, I just shot it a couple min uh, a couple hours ago, so it's very dirty. Let me wipe this down first. Oh, this is a DI gun, direct impingement. So it's not nothing. Nothing special. It's not like a piston piston gun, but um, let's talk about the bolt, which is um, probably the main reason for anyone to get this gun. Um, as you can see, very very dirty. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, you probably can't see um, the difference. Let me take out the other bolt we have here. Okay. <clears throat> on the right, we have a standard AR bolt, and on the left, we have the E3 uh, Knight's Armament bolt. It's very similar, but as you can see here, on the E3 bolt, the lugs are rounded, and the right is the standard AR bolt. The lugs it's squared. It has a 90 degree angle on, on all sides. Um, the point of the rounded lugs is because um, um, for for high roundage, um, high round count AR bolts, they usually break either on this lug or this lug um, that's closest to the um, uh, ex extractor. So they. They fixed it by doing um, the rounded lugs. As we all know, rounded um, arches and rounded corners will less likely to break than uh, when compared to a, a squared um, um, geometry. Um, in this case, the bolt design. So <clears throat> that's a plus. Um, according to KAC, they have a warranty. Well, I don't think it's a warranty. It might be a warranty, but they. Um, they have a 20,000 uh, round um, count for 
every single bolt and it goes it actually goes beyond that um, Chris Costa uh, Travis Haley all the uh, the tactical people tactical the tactical people um, they actually do shoot the SR15 well at least a couple of years ago and um, Travis Haley has over 80,000 rounds with his uh, SR15 E3 it's an earlier generation with a different front end but it's still a um, SR15 but um, he's it's still running and it still holds a 2.5 MOA group and with all original uh, parts and uh, Chris Costa is on his third barrel but still using the same internals um, so you that just proves how strong this bolt is and how uh, how much the the simple geometry change can uh, matters in, in terms of reliability um, I'm sorry durability so so that's the E3 bolt um, uh, actually let me take this out uh, talk more about it um, the carrier is just any uh, standard military I mean uh, M16 type uh, carrier it's nothing special any carrier will, will fit this gun it's just the bolt and the barrel lug is uh, special. <clears throat> Let me take this apart. It's very dirty. Wow, it's got some. Um, I just shot uh, over a thousand rounds this couple couple um, couple weeks. I got this gun about three weeks ago. Anyways, um, let's talk about the bolt. Um, this bolt, the material is uh, 9310 um, steel from uh, Carpenter. It's not a uh, it's not the uh, 158 Carpenter steel, but um, I'm not sure why. Uh, but um, I think I heard um, I read that both steel um, type it's about the same hardness, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, so, okay. So like I said, the rounded lugs. And they also changed the um, the can pin, the the can pin hole, and the can pin. Actually, they changed the firing pin also. Uh, as you can see here, this hole is a lot uh, smaller than what you will find on a standard AR uh, can pin. And so they 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 have a smaller hole for the can pin. Um, they also uh, modified the firing pin. So to fit this uh, smaller smaller hole, so all these three parts are um, special to the SR15 rifle. The reason for this change is because uh, if you have a larger larger cutout for this <clears throat> for this uh, camping hole, um, on some of the lesser uh, less quality or even some of the quality brands, it'll break uh, near here. So that's just to um, improve the durability of the bolt and also they changed through this uh, lobster tail um, um, extractor design their inside they have a dual um, extractor springs to enhance uh, reliable extra, uh, ejection of the casing so also you can see here <coughs> excuse me um, that's a, a detention spring to hold the this pin in place they also move the pin um, <clears throat> a bit forward um, to enhance the, the extraction of the rounds. Uh, <clears throat> so that's the complete E3 bolt um, design. Uh, just to just to uh, maybe you guys want to know this um, this bolt. If you want to buy replacements, they're three hundred and fifty dollars each, which is pretty much three times the price as your um, high-end AR bolt. Um, there's no, um, with all the owner um, owners of the SR-15s out there, none report, no one reported any breakage or any problems with these bolts yet. So um, I'm pretty sure the E3 bolt will, will last you a while. Um, but just to, just to keep in mind, these are very expensive parts, so. Um, but that's that's the E3 bolt. <clears throat> so now we're gonna talk about the the buffer. The buffer, it's dirty. 
the buffer it's marked SR15 from uh, what I heard it's basically just a carbon weight buffer um, <clears throat> the gas system um, from what I heard I never experienced with uh, different buffers uh, the mid-length system will not really function with a heavier buffer so that's why you, they have a carbon buffer um, I would tell you right now this gun does shoot very smooth when compared to um, a carbine length gun and AR-15 rifle so <clears throat> and the, you can't really tell right now but this is nickel plated uh, but it looks black um, here we can see the uh, like I mentioned before this over here it's just a standard bolt release you can press down to lock the, the bolt open but from the other side it's just a uh, bolt release you you can hold the bolt open from from the side okay we have um, <clears throat> the e3 bolt it the e3 bolt will not fit in any other um, AR-15 with the standard AR-15 barrel extension which is the which you can see here the 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 barrel <laughs> The barrel uh, barrel extension uh, goes with the E3 bolt. So, if you want a E3 bolt, you have to buy an E3 barrel extension, which you can, because uh, it's kind of exclusive to the Knights nice Armament Company. So, as far as I know, <clears throat> um, the internals of the upper uh, it's really hard to tell right now. But uh, maybe you can see the gray through here. That is also a dry film lube. Um, it's. <clears throat> I don't think a lot of companies use this. I know Colt does. I have a Colt rifle that that has this, and on top the the PSA rifle that it does not have the dry film lube. Um, it's not necessary, but it's like I said before, it's good to have. Another minor detail: the um, gas tube is um, kind of basically free floating. It doesn't contact anything within the rail itself. It, it's uh, connected to the gas uh, gas block, of course, and it runs. It it doesn't touch anything throughout this uh, the 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 full length. I think it touches a little bit in the receiver, but um, I think that's just to prevent the gas tube from uh, wobbling too much. So I missed a couple things on the the forend. Um, let's talk about how to take the the forehand apart and how it was assembled. Um, to take the, the bottom portion apart, um, you have to unscrew all the screws on, 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 the, on the side, on both sides. Um, I have uh, four on each side right now. It's not required. It, you can take um, the, this one off or this one off and keep the, just the, the ones on the panel and the bottom will still stay in put. Um, the threads is, uh, it's it's not on the upper it's there's the the body there's the upper body and there's a lower body the threads itself it's on the lower body so you need to take the the, the screws out for in order to take out the uh, the bottom portion the bottom portion after you take out all the screws uh, there's a detent in here you have to depress the detent um, <clears throat> to to uh, take out the, the bottom portion so Alright, this rifle is a very high-end rifle. It's not uh, normally for um, you know an entry beginner uh, shooter. Um, this rifle comes in at two thousand dollar to um, twenty-two hundred dollar range, and uh, sadly, it's discontinued in favor of the Ma Two series SR15 Ma Two, which has the key mod uh, rail system. The reason I got this the mod one instead, uh, it's because um, I really do not like the the visual, the aesthetics of the key mods uh, foreign. Um, I much rather have the 3.1 over the three. I mean, I mean uh, the over the four uh, URX four uh, rail. So um, the price is two thousand dollars, and I know a lot of people will be screaming, "Why is it so much?" and I'm gonna explain the, all the features of this gun. Let's go from the, the bottom to the front. <clears throat> Here we have uh, a $200 stock, um, which in my opinion it's uh, basically just a $150 stock. Uh, the grip is, I, I changed it so it doesn't matter. Um, QD, uh, in my opinion, it's worth $30. 
and the trigger in my opinion all all the all the pricing will be in my opinion so it will be much lower than the actual retail price in my opinion it's 150 okay um, the charging handle it's the extended lever uh, originally um, I don't value the original charging handle as anything any I don't view it as an upgrade so I'm not gonna include that the front view uh, backup site and I mean the front backup site and the back, uh, rear backup site each one of these retail is 150 but so $300 in terms of just the sites but in my opinion it's only worth 150 so uh, <clears throat> okay the MB controls uh, you know add-on 150 um, I talked about the triggers being 150 so 150 MB controls the f uh, the rail in my opinion will be worth truly the retail price which is $250 actually the retail is 300 so never mind in my opinion it's worth $250 and the E3 uh, feature which is in my opinion is very important to to this gun um, so it'll be $150 uh, additional add-on um, so I think that's everything all the features it just got the standard muzzle brake so nothing special at the at the front uh, mid mid length uh, gas system I don't think um, I would add any extra price uh, on top of the original rifle itself so if you add all the parts all the features stock QD uh, double stage match trigger MB controls um, both backup sites four end E3 bolts and E3 bolt and the barrel extension um, add all these together you're right around at um, on top of a uh, mid length let's say a BCM rifle and you add all those together it you're right at the $2,000 mark so mm, is it worth all the features if you add all the features together it's worth it but do you need the MB controls in my I mean I, for me personally I don't I don't shoot left-handed so to me it's not worth it but you know if you actually use all the features um, I would say go ahead and get 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 the rifle but uh, I know it's not for everyone everyone's not you know tactical like Chris Costa and Travis Haley but uh, um, it, this is my favorite uh, AR platform uh, variant right now so um, overall it's a great gun um, actually I missed okay the barrel <laughs> The barrels um, um, don't expect too much from from this barrel. It is uh, somewhere between the uh, government profile barrel and the pencil barrel, so it's relatively thin. Um, I did get a 1.5 MOA group at 100, um, shooting 55 grain, um, just uh, hot shot brand ammo. I think it's from Bosnia, so it's not a match um, ammo. And it, it is 55 grain, which is relatively um, lightweight for for oh this is a uh, one 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 to seven twist barrel, so it is not ideal to shoot that uh, 55 grain bullet through the through this um, this type of rifling. But uh, it is fairly accurate at 1.5 MOA. Some guns does it better. Um, some uh, owners report sub MOA, uh, MOA or one MOA, so. Um, it depends on uh, you know uh, batch of barrels and but ideally you will get one uh, one to 1.5 MOA so it is fairly accurate 